So my cycle started, it actually came three days earlier than usual and I was feeling really weak, like my energy was very, very low and it came in the right in the time of Christmas, just before, like the day before Christmas or a couple days before Christmas when I had a lot of running up and down to do but I didn't have the energy so I really, I, I was forced to, to stop and so I decided to make myself some porridge as usual you know food is my sustenance food is what builds me back food is my medicine so I decided to make some sea bass porridge with banana green banana and I didn't have any molasses but um, I have some shatavari that I got from some shatavari powder that I got from my friend Tiffany, she and her boyfriend have a line of herbal products. So they have some products for women and some products for men. So they, they have a hormone balancer that's made of Shatavari, which is an Indian herb. And so um, I'm using that as well, a spoonful of that in the porridge today. This is just an example of how I, I am mindful of the things that I eat and how I try to eat healthier and choose better options, you know. Um, always thinking of my food as medicine and as the thing that I look to to feel better in any situation at all. And porridge for me has always been a kind of comfort food. It's always so comforting, it's warm. It just makes you feel like you get a big hug from mommy. And a lot of times I yearn for that feeling. So porridge helps me with that. Certain warm foods help me with that. And I think I'm not the only one. I think this is kind of universal, you know? We look to certain foods for comfort, for that type of nurturing comfort, and porridge is definitely one of them. So I like to use, you know, as natural ingredients as possible. So I'm, I always get the coconut and get a native coconut and make coconut milk myself and I use spring water and some of the coconut water as well as much as I can get out of the coconut and you know of course I add nutmeg, I add a little vanilla and um, I sweeten it with honey This video was requested and I thought it was a really good idea to give some healthy eating tips because I know that a lot of people struggle with making better choices when it comes to food. You can find yourself in a space where you really just don't know what to do, what to eat. So hopefully this video helps. I'll be doing some videos going forward about food and healthy eating tips and I do have some food stuff on my channel so I'll, what I'll do is create I already created a playlist I think there's a playlist about plant-based food and so most of the videos that I do on food are in that video food and herbs or anything related to what we consume is in that playlist so I'll link it here so you guys can check it out so let's get to the list first on the list is to practice mental discipline a lot of us make poor food decisions because we're not disciplined i have my indiscipline as well with some things that i shouldn't be eating i know i shouldn't be eating i know it affects my body in a certain way but i still eat them so i have to put mental discipline into practice and stop eating those things there are many books out there on how you can control your mind, how you can fix your mind in a particular direction. One of my favorite books, I always talk about it, The Master Key. It's a book that teaches you about mental discipline, 
concentration, observation. And what I love about this book is that it is practice. It's not just theory. It shows you how to be disciplined mentally. It's something that you have to put into practice and you get better at these things through repetition. My second tip is that you prepare your own food. You have to learn to prepare your own food. If you cannot cook, learn to cook. You cannot depend on restaurants or other people to provide the food that you want. If you live in a family of health, unhealthy eaters, you're going to be in trouble because if you can't prepare your own food, you're going to eat what they eat. If you um, go out to eat, you can't guarantee what is out there. A lot of these restaurants really cook for taste. They don't really cook for health. Few of them, very few of them that you can trust to cook for health. When you're away from home for a long time, you will run out of options of food to eat. So the best thing to do is to prepare your food and carry it with you wherever you go so you know what you're having, you're sure about what you're having and there is no confusion of what am I going to eat and you're not starving yourself either or you don't end up eating something that you don't want to eat because you didn't prepare. Number three, don't feel pressured by people. It's very easy when you're in spaces with people who eat every and anything to be pressured by them you know because they like to drop remarks and say you know oh you eat like a rabbit or you're gonna starve yourself or you're skinny you've lost a lot of weight as if that is unhealthy they will try to guilt trip you into eating the way that they do when you make a decision to eat well for yourself and take care of your body it makes them question their decision about how they treat their bodies and so it's just their insecurities being projected onto you a lot of times making conscious decisions is a lonely path and so you just have to accept that and let it go and move on this is where i am I'm alone on this journey, this is my path and I'm taking it, no matter what. Number four, encourage your partner to eat the way that you do. It's very challenging to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't eat like you do. Food is one of the main activities in a relationship. You love to eat with the person that you're with. You love to share with them. You love to eat from each other's plates. You like to carry food for them. You like when they bring you food. It's just something that couples like to do together. They enjoy food together. When you're on a different path from your partner, that is challenging. I was in a relationship with somebody who loved meat. That's one of the main reasons why we're not together anymore because he didn't choose to take care of himself. He would always promise, oh, I'm gonna start eating this and eating that and I stop eating this and I stop eating that. But trust me, when I'm not around, he's eating all of the things that he said he's not going to eat. And so it would really show on him. <laughs> it would show on him. I know that you haven't made the changes that you say you're going to make. Of course, he would never really take my healthy eating choices very seriously. So when him come around, he's offering me things that I don't want. I'm like, no, I don't want that. And then also, I think people think when you go on, when you say you're very vegetarian or vegan, for some reason, they think that it still includes fish. So they'll offer you fish. People always offer me fish same way. And I'm like, fish, fish is not, it's an animal, you know. It's not a plant. I don't understand how people think that Fish can be a, a part of a plant-based diet. That's wild to me. I don't understand it. Anyway, it would be good for you and your partner to be on the same page as far as food. Number five, create a routine. Like, I have a way that I eat every day. And I hardly change from that way. Um, I get up in the mornings. I have water. I have fruits and tea and then a little bit later on in the morning i have some nuts like but sometimes i mix it with some banana nuts dates and banana and sometimes a little piece of dark chocolate and um that's my morning i really don't have lunch sometimes i may have a cup of sip that's soup but no meat then in the late 
afternoon, I will have my lunch slash dinner. I try not to eat anything after that. Once the sun goes down, I try not to eat anything. Uh, it, I'm not saying it won't happen, but I try not to make it happen. So I try to eat before. And the only thing that I may have, if I get peckish, I'll have a little snacks, like some nuts or some chickpea snacks or something like that. Or sometimes I do have ice cream, some vegan ice cream. I'm guilty of that. And, th and that is one of the reasons I get some blackheads sometimes is because of that. Because it has sugar in it, cane sugar in it, it's sweet. But that's my guilty pleasure. So create a routine, figure out something that works for you. Um, how you want to eat, what you want to eat at what time, or what your cutoff times are. And stick to it. Be disciplined and stick to it. Number six. And this I did before I actually um, became fully plant-based. I did a vegan challenge with Kushite's vegetable cuisine. So I suggest you give yourself a vegan challenge. If it's three days, seven days, 14 days, even 30 days, 30 days is a good, 30 days is always a good t amount of time to accomplish a, a goal. But I did 14 days at Kushites. It was really good. It was my first time eating like that. No meat, no dairy, no, well, I had, I had gluten, yes, but no meat, no dairy. And it was great. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Yes, they were providing the food most days, but um, it was incredible. I loved, I love Kushites. And it's one of the reasons why I talk about them so much because I experience them like I don't think much other people have. And so I, I know what Kush can do with food. He's incredible. But yeah, it really helped me. It really pushed me towards my goal of eating fully vegan and being on that journey of not eating any meats anymore, not eating fish, not eating dairy all of that so i was grateful for that experience just try it. give it a try and see how you feel and I'm, i promise you you will feel wonderful just give yourself a challenge it doesn't have to be vegan you could just stop eating certain things or challenge yourself to eat more of something and do it for a, a period of time number seven study your body study your body listen to your body your body will always tell you especially after you've done like a fast a cleanse the challenge you know if you go back to eating a certain way your body will always tell you no i don't like this i don't like this this makes me feel uncomfortable you will see the difference because your body will tell you um you get bloated you get pain you get nausea, all kinds of different feelings that you didn't, you weren't really sensitive to it before because your body just became immune to certain foods. So when you eliminate them, your body is more responsive. So you have to listen, listen to your body, study it, know what it likes, know what it responds well to. And that chances are when it responds well to certain things, it means that there is something in that food that you need. And so you should be eating more of it because generally um, our bodies are lacking in some type of mineral and so it shows up in different ways that we're lacking in this mineral and so you have to pay very close attention to how your body responds to food because it definitely does number eight eat mindfully and i did a video recently about eating mindfully i'll link it here is just being very present while you are eating um, take the time to sit with your food smell it observe it be with it look at it look at all of the colors take in the fragrance and think about all of the good things that it is doing for you when you are conscious so conscious about the food that you are eating it is very difficult to make poor decisions you can't eat a big slice of pizza and be telling yourself about all of the great things that it's going to do to your body that's just not realistic 
because it's not gonna happen when you eat well and you're conscious about what you're eating and thinking about the benefits of them it's easier to choose that way number nine and this is the final one is to do your own research learn about food learn about the effects on your bodies there are lots of food gurus out there there are lots of health gurus as well who share information about food and the benefits of food food and nutrition that is and um, they really didn't teach us much about food and nutrition in high school um, there we did the course in food and nutrition but I think the nutrition part was lacking but there's lots of information now online as I said we live in the information age so you can research for yourself everything is there for you to see for yourself nobody don't have to tell you you don't have to listen to me or anybody else you can know for yourself so do the research once you are in a space of awareness it is easier to make de better decisions because you know better it's that simple so that's it those are my tips nine tips i gave you for healthy eating i hope this will be very helpful to you if it is please don't forget to share with others who you think may benefit from this information don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't just yet i do have some more food videos coming out so you guys should stay tuned for that and we'll link up in the next video all right take care on yourself later